Hey everybody, welcome to the secret history living in your aquarium. Uh, this is the second installment here where I wanted to show you this really cool uh, activity caught live. So this is a bubble nesting gourami and uh, known as the paradise fish or the kissing fish. You can actually see the eggs. Can you guys make out those eggs in the bubbles? The clear uh, spheres? in the bubbles of this very thick um, frothy bubble nest that this fish makes and the male will guard it but it actually lifts those eggs up out of the water completely and he's under there right now just working away 24 7 for probably three four days until they hatch and the female she is right here hanging out they happen to be an albino uh, variety but they have to protect their babies from these guys. And when they have a common foe, they tend to eat their babies less frequently, and they tend to be better parents. So I like using dither fish, even though oftentimes the dither fish do eat some of the fry. But with a nest like this, I let the parents take care of the hard stuff, the uh, keeping the humidity right and the bacteria and fungi off the eggs which is exactly what he's doing right now and uh, then over here literally just six days ago they did the same thing and they had a nest and over here we have uh, a week old as of tomorrow morning so let's call it a week old fry and they do just look like little heads right now with little tails and a spherical body that looks like the egg they hatched out of basically. Uh, they don't have much of a yolk sac like a lot of fry do, um, or at least it doesn't contain anything of substance. Uh, no, you know, uh, yellow yolk or center to it uh, with any sort of nourishment that seems any different than just uh, a clear body that they hatch out and then when they eat it seems to fill up so it seems to be an empty void uh, as far as I can tell but these guys hatch and while they're small you can see this guy moving around right here in the size of my f fingernail they aren't so small that they can't eat um, pre-prepared flake food so stuff like uh, like this aquarium co-op fry food uh, this stuff works really well, but also hatching out vinegar eels in the bottle and brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp, that's going to make them grow a whole lot faster. Now, the last clutch was hatched on this side over here, and there are still some babies hanging out up in this side, and that's what these guys are probably going after as we speak. But we're focusing on about 30 of them at a time in batches in here, and then we'll move them on to another tank once they have um, enough size, once they're about the size of the little guys up in here. And these are great fish in that they don't need any sort of filter or air uh, or water movement really. As long as there's no ammonia or nitrates in the water, you can literally raise them in a cup. And so that's handy. Now remember that the food you feed them is gonna make ammonia, nitrates, nitrites. Uh, in pretty short order it can muck up the water so feed them very teeny amounts like this is way too much food and it was just barely a pinch and you see it floating as a dust in the corner here for about 30 of them uh, and that's probably about three times more food than I should have put in so I'll either skim that off or uh, leave it for you know two days worth of food depending on if they're still eating it in the morning uh, when I check on them but these gouramis, very similar uh, with what they do. And also in, up in this tank that I had mentioned, we have sparkling gourami fry, and there's probably 50 of them swimming around. And they're pretty similar, except for their nests aren't quite as extravagant. They don't lift up out of the water as high or anything. And they always tend to be kind of in the corners and in the weeds or in the floating plants uh, with fine fine uh you know stuff like like uh uh hornwort here or uh kabamba or something like that 
And then the babies will hide anywhere from in between little rocks and things to up high. Usually it's up high. So I like to get, if I'm gonna keep them in a colony or with other fish, I like to make sure that I've got layers like this amongst most of the top, at least half of the top, and moss in the bottom. So I'll put this hornwort over top of that moss if I were to grow out medium-sized adults and young fry and that allows them to survive. Kind of the same with what's going on in here with the guppy grass. Nausea grass or guppy grass is another great option. But to get them in the mood um, helps to have a humid room and it helps to have pretty neutral water with a lower TDS. Um, slightly acidic helps and some gouramis you need very acidic but for the most part if you have neutral water uh, they'll, they'll do the hard part for you and uh, you just need to feed them and, and watch them. This female's still colored up with some yellow and green on her tail here, and they're actually in with a whole bunch of shrimp, if you can make those out, clear shrimp, Malawa shrimp, and uh, they're in here as just a constant food source for the, uh, the fish. And then also their babies are a perfect food source for the midsize juveniles that sometimes survive and uh, escape me pulling them out. So sometimes I'll find a few babies that were left to colony breed even if I'm intentionally pulling them out and I'm going to plan to put them over in a tank like this or the one up there, you know. I keep these tanks kind of ready and play musical fish with them. So uh, that helps. The other thing that kind of helps is if you're going to play musical fish, um, you can introduce any pathogen to each tank pretty easily. And so I like to... Uh, keep the tanks around 84 degrees so that's the temperature that uh, ick tends to die at and uh, then I don't seem to ever get the um, issues with these guys getting ick or anything although gouramis tend to be on the hardier side with catching it it's they're, they're not one that's known for having a lot of problems with ick but yeah just wanted to share this little moment with you guys and also over here See, the female will go encourage the male a little bit sometimes. Sometimes she'll kind of scare over food. If there's live baby brine shrimp, she'll kind of corral it over there. And I don't know if that's for the husband or for her babies. I guess it doesn't really matter, um, but it's just kind of endearing, and it's fun to watch. So he uses some sort of slime coat and saliva um, secretion to create these little, um, little jewels of... Uh, little pillows for jewels of eggs and uh, usually he'll build it first and kind of see if she approves of it and once it's a certain height out of the water or a certain size she'll kind of decide if it's ready for them to uh, reproduce she'll do a little wiggle just like that but she'll do it stationary or back to front it's pretty common with most gouramis that they do something like that and then they uh, will go on and they kind of do curl up around each other and then she'll lay eggs and he will take them kind of one by one in his mouth and lift them up into the nest and then continue now that they're in the nest to patch the nest and to keep the bubbles um, keep adding bubbles to the underside to push it upward and kind of encase the eggs in there so they're not just floating however the eggs do float naturally so um, if he does miss one in the nest or if the nest gets broken up by predators or something uh, they still will float and you know it's not like the fish are gonna drown so <laughs> it's all good well I hope you guys uh, like this little video this little two-part video talking a bit about what goes on dun, 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 in gouramis and bettas when you're breeding them uh, but it's pretty simple straightforward and uh, I guess in a few months we'll probably have an update with some some cute little babies hopefully uh, which then I'll sell and we'll probably try getting a few new species of rare or more interesting, more comma interesting fish. <laughs> Alright guys, take it easy, have a good one, and I will talk to you next time.